I believe this is the absolute best way to freeze your fish. Fish companies that sell fish cannot do this because it would be too heavy for shipping and packaging, but you have the choice and freezing them in water while still being easily identifiable for Ministry of Natural Resources purposes here in Ontario is the best way to store your walleye fillets. Here's three Lake Erie walleye fillets that are frozen in water. You can see that the skin is very recognizable on each one and they are frozen in water. Here's the opposite side of those fillets and you can see that the meat is beautiful, white and clean. Looking from the top, you can see that there is a minimal amount of water in this bag and that will make for quick and easy thawing purposes. Stay tuned in this video if you would like to learn how to package and process your fish like this so it will be good for a long period of time to come and I've found that this is the absolute best way of storing your walleye fillets and as always if you find the video enjoyable or helpful a like share subscribe is always very much appreciated. This method of storing your walleye fillets is very cost effective and you don't need expensive vacuum sealing equipment and bags. Just a few simple Ziploc freezer bags and you are good to go. From the Fishing Ontario regulations, you can see that all fish must be packaged so that they can be easily counted and identified. And they also need to be frozen in clear freezer bags. It is a violation to not have an identifiable piece of skin on the fish or to clump them in a way that the fish cannot be counted. Here you can see some properly bagged fillets and I am going to use the method on the left. They are very similar to it. So let's get right to it and let's see how I prepare my fish for the freezer. Here's a couple of beautiful Lake Erie walleyes. As a general rule, we try not to keep anything that is over five pounds. We cut the gills as we put the fish into the live well. After the fish is bled out, we transfer it to a cooler which is on the boat loaded with ice. Storing bled out fish in a cooler under ice is the best way to preserve walleye prior to filleting them. Here's a quick look at the way that I fillet my walleye so that they are ready for the freezer. I use an old desktop that was going to be thrown out and I have some cold water bath for the fillets when they are done. I like to cut near the edge of the board. It just gives me better leverage with my knife and I get under the pectoral fin. Some people worry about the walleye wings. I'm not gonna worry about any of that. I'm just gonna cut down towards the backbone. Once I get down there, I'm gonna turn the knife. I just run along the backbone and I'm gonna cut right through the tail. When you bleed them out, you can see that there's very little blood to deal with. And I will show you how I do the rest a little bit later. So I just flip it over and I use the head as my holding leverage point. Get down, bring it down the backbone and just run along. my two fillets. Some people again worry about the cheeks and that. I'm not that guy. And so there is basically my two fillets and you can see how clean they are. Now this is a very important part of the video uh, because we are learning how to preserve our catch and put it in the freezer in a very safe way that it's going to be fresh for a long time. So I'm just using my fingernail. I'm going to hold it down. 
And a little downward pressure. And I'm going to go along. Once again, cutting near the edge. So very important. I need to leave a little bit of skin on for identification purposes. And there I have my filet with a little bit of skin. And I will take the ribs out a little bit later. But that will be there for identification purposes so that the ministry, if they ever did decide to check your freezer, they could see that it is walleye. Okay, and, and I would like my electric knife, so I'm just going to continue using it. You could do this with a, just a handheld knife. It might be a little bit better. And I'm just going to take out Rip cage and there's a little bit of bone there in the middle. And I'm just gonna strip that out. And strip that out. And I'll clean it up a little bit later, but you've got the basic idea. There's your fillet and you've got the piece of identification skin left on. And I'm just gonna put it in the cold water bath. Doesn't need much rinsing as you can tell because the fish has been bled out. Cleaning your fish can give you a good idea of the forage they are feeding on. Check out this piggy that had at least 16 minnows that I counted in its belly. Here's my limit of Lake Erie walleye. Beautiful three to four pound fish, perfect eaters. I highly recommend bleeding them out. It makes it so much easier to wash the fillets and you can see just how clean they are. Here's the flip side of that same group of fish and you can see the easily identifiable markers that indicate that they are walleye. I use large Ziploc freezer bags and I use a permanent marker which labels the date that they were caught, where they were caught, and the number of pieces. Label the bag with the permanent marker before putting your fish in it. I like putting three pieces in because it's just a nice manageable size for a meal for two. And plus, as you can see with these beautiful Lake Erie walleye, the three pieces fit neatly into the large Ziploc and they are easily identifiable. Some people go to the extent of vacuum sealing, but I'm going to show you a very neat little trick that my friend Lou Scalarini taught me, and it is a way to freeze your fish in water that still makes them identifiable and does not have a whole lot of water that you have to thaw out when you want to cook your walleye. Right. All right, so now I've got my walleye. And I could take these and I'm going to submerge them into the water and I could just let the water eventually fill it up. But I like to run a little bit of water, kind of partially fill up the bag. And if I keep the bag underwater, the weight of the water is going to displace the air that's inside. So right now that's enough. I've got some water in there. And I'm gonna take and just force out any air bubbles. And you can see some, there's gonna be a bubble pop out there. You see how it pop out. And it's, it's a different form of vacuum sealing. And it's, it's obviously a lot more cost efficient than uh, buying some kind of machine. And I'll just simply work those out. And like I say, the weight of the water is my friend and it's helping displace them. And I'm going to seal it underneath the water. And again, if there's any remaining air bubbles, I'm gonna try and force them out. And once I've got that sealed, run it all the way through. And you can see that there is a minimal amount of water. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it in a bowl. And once again, I'm going to spread my fillets out because they are frozen in water. And when I do go to put them in the freezer, I will make sure they're nice and flat. 
and that fish will stay nice and fresh for a very long period of time. So that is a great tip from Lou and I've used it for a long time with my walleye and they will be absolutely delicious even a year later. Here's a few other little things that I do just to make the freezing process a little bit smoother. You can see that I have a dish towel here, just an old one, and I'm going to use that to pat the bags dry since they have been immersed in water. And you can also see the large bowl that I have here. Obviously I don't want to be dripping any potentially fishy smelling water through the house, so I need to make sure that I keep the house smelling clean and not fishy. You can see that my freezer has these hanging baskets, so I like to take an old cereal box and put that down before I lay the fish down, and that will avoid me having the crinkle fish package when it comes out. I curl the top end just on the outside chance that it does leak, and you can see that that is going to sit nicely there, and you can easily see that there are three identifiable pieces of walleye in that package, so I am following the rules that apply to your fish conservation and storage. I take another cereal box and then I am going to put down the second layer of fish. The fish can get shifted in the bag so you do have to sometimes manually shift each fillet so that they are remaining easily identifiable and not overlapping. Package number three in place and there you go. You can see that my fish is cleaned fresh, preserved fresh, and it will taste amazing and just as fresh as if you've just caught it. If you've never tried to keep your fish stored this way, I would highly recommend it, but please remember to stay within the confines of the law. Thank you to my buddy Lou for this awesome tip. I appreciate it and have used it for many years and I hope you like it and as always if you find this video enjoyable or helpful a like share subscribe is always very much appreciated take care and bye for now